Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel, Bears podcast by Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry, and today, the 350th episode of uh, the Bear Trap, and I'm talking about Tevin Jenkins. So, Ian Rappaport uh, has tweeted out, and I, I was actually on Twitter looking at something else, and I just happened to see his tweet about this. Um, but he said that the Bears have received calls and they're taking calls on trades for Tevin Jenkins. And so uh, there are some teams interested in the upside and think that he still could be a good player. But it seems and, and he didn't give deep information. So I don't know if the the Bears are trading or like the Nets are trying to trade KD. You know what I mean? We're trying to trade KD, which is going to ask for crazy stuff in return. So I don't know if that's the case or if it's like we want to get him out. But the way he worded it, as far as they're taking calls, it seems like people are coming to them. It's not like they were out shopping Jenkins. So, you, you know, you could take that for what it is. But what we do know is this is a second or play. I can't even say a second year play. He hasn't even played yet. A, a player going into his second year, and we're already talking about trading him. Now, yes, the first thing we'll say, Ryan Poles didn't draft him. I get it. I get it. So it, it, it almost becomes a little bit of a you can do what you want free pass when it's players that you didn't draft. And so, I mean, it's the same thing with Justin Fields. There's a lot of people who really believe um, that Ryan Poles uh, secretly and potentially Eberflus, they don't want Justin Fields. And the only reason I could give, I mean, not the only reason, but one of the reasons I give that real credence is because uh, the way they set him up this year. <laughs> I'm like, what do y'all think is going to happen? But anyway, so if you could get rid of Justin Fields, you get rid of Tevin Jenkins. Yeah, yes, he was high second round, but he still was second round. And, and you know, it, it wasn't a player. So, um, yes, I get you got that free pass. But it's it, it, to me, it's never it never makes sense to give up a, a valuable asset, even if you didn't draft them, unless, you know, things are real bad. So and, you know. Uh, I'll throw this on myself again. I, I just saw the tweet and I want to jump into it. So I'll throw this on myself. I haven't, you know, read any beat reporters, anybody that have been talking about Jenkins uh, as far as his relationship with the new staff. So I don't know if they there's already something out there. It might be. But I know as far as on the field, we know last year that um Actually, before he even, you know, before the season started, uh, his back started giving him issues. Now, this is issues that were previously documented. They knew that he had these back issues when they drafted him. And then, obviously, they didn't expect it to be as severe as it was last year. So he missed a good amount of time. We also know that when he started or when he, you know, uh, got to play, he did not look great. I mean, he had hella penalties, hella penalties. So, I mean, if you go back to my reaction, I, I like the pick. Um, I love the idea of going up to get this uh, young tackle. I love that part. As far as the player in the class, um, you know, there was some other people that I liked a little more. Um, I didn't think Tevin was the best of the bunch, but... Tevin was still, I thought, a really good prospect. So you take the back injuries, you couple that with all the things he came into the league needing to get better at, and it just, the product didn't look good. So, but you're talking about a rookie who came in in the middle of the year off injury. So, of course, this year was a year to really get an idea. Now, one thing we do know, uh, two things I should say, one thing we know is they brought in a whole lot of offensive linemen. Um, they, a whole lot. I mean, the, I mean, the only thing that matches is probably the receiver, the amount of receivers we got. And, you know, they, they, they are offensive linemen. They are, but that, <laughs> it's not like they brought in pro bowlers. So there's some journey, a lot of journeymen. There's some young guys. Tevin's in that mix, too. 
And with all those linemen, they have been rotating everybody at different positions for the most part, trying to see what combination works best. And another way you could look at it is Jalen Johnson, who I will always tell you was overrated last year. People going crazy about him, but is a starting corner, hands down. He uh, had to rotate with the second uh, unit, and that was a big thing. And some people still wonder if he's going to start. So I think it's just part of training camp. You know, people getting a little too overzealous about it. But what we do know is Jenkins don't have that spot locked down from last year, what he did, and he don't have it locked down from what he's been doing uh, so far in the offseason. So the second thing we know is they just brought in two more tackles. So that – Adds to the crowded O-line room, but specifically, it says we got guys that play tackle that are vets, and we think that's a spot that we can really get some competition. Now, everybody says we want competition in camp, and it always ends up being the same starters anyway. And everybody says what Paul says, we want hard workers, we want these type of caliber guys. So far... They have backed up that whole thing with competition at at specific spots. They've really brought in a number of people to go at it. I mean, because even when they said that before on the Bears, whether it was Nagy or Fox, they didn't necessarily bring in legit competition every year. Like, they didn't have seven, eight offensive linemen that were legit competing for spots. And most of that is because, uh, well, I should say right now, most of that is because we don't have great offensive linemen that have starting positions. So that is part of it. But you see they're putting their, you know, they're putting the actions behind the words and bringing in people for competition. But, again, um, the fact is Jenkins is part of that competition. And it's very possible he did not show them uh, anything so far as to say you are the second-round asset that we should keep. I mean... Uh, second year, t- you think about Rashawn Slater, um, you think about Worfs last year. A second year high performing tackle, that is gold. That's not a quarterback or anything, but it's gold. It's still a high value a- asset. And so, for to be thinking about getting rid of him, you must really not like what you see. And so, again, they're taking calls according to Rappaport. They're not shopping him per se, but it seems like. He could be on the move. And so, um, you know, for me, again, I don't expect a whole lot from this O-line. I mean, it happens every year. People, no matter who it is, people were talking about um, Khalil Mack's little brother. Well, what do you think uh, Khalil Mack's little brother's going to do? How do you think he's going to impact the defense? I, he's not. What are you talking about? Like, that's a bottom of the roster type dude. Like, so, some fans want to look at every single part and think that is going to mean something but um you know me i look at the writing on the wall from a bigger picture we're not going to be a great team and we're definitely not going to have a great o-line it's it's the same every year they're trying to find the best five and fans repeat that like oh they're trying to find the best five that doesn't mean the best five are good (laughs) so yes we're going to have an o-line but i don't expect them to be that great uh in general and so to lose Jenkins wouldn't um, wouldn't really sway me a whole lot on the O line per se, but it would just be a little jarring that uh, our second year player just got traded. So that that's the thing that I'm looking at. Um, yeah, it, it, it would be. I mean, it'd be a, a bold move by Poles to uh, set the standard, especially if it comes out that he's just not a hard worker. Now, we know uh, he did not come in the best of shape, and he had a hurt back. So, it's, it's, I don't know. I'm sure for a professional athlete with an injured back, they could pay people to still, you know, get them to work out. But I would imagine with an injured back, you can't obviously get into the type of workouts you want. Now, if he's in camp right now and he's still not up to snuff, he doesn't look like his weight proportion is together. He doesn't seem like he's got good stamina. Um, maybe they think he's not the type of worker that they want to be on the team. And especially, again, as a valuable asset, you're going to be looked at as kind of a cornerstone. 
And so if he's not up to snuff, maybe they just want to get him out. Like I said, to get Riley Reef and uh, Schofield, again, two people I'm not I'm not really thinking much about as far as they're just stop gaps. But to get them at this point in the season, uh, the offseason, that, that might point to the fact that they're not loving what they see. So you got Borum uh, more than likely going to be the right tackle. And um, they're trying to figure out the rest of these positions. I know there's talk about moving Tevin to guard. Maybe he hasn't looked good at guard. Um, either way, whatever the reasoning is, it, it really won't matter. The question is, if they trade t- Jenkins, what do I think? And again, for me, it doesn't sway me a whole lot on the overall offensive line unit. And it doesn't sway me a whole lot on the team. The only thing that I would think is that this might have been just an individual character thing that didn't match up with the type of players that Poles and Eberflus want. That that might be it. But, yeah, I, I, I know some people are going to be real mad about it. Um, but, you know, for me, it doesn't move the needle. But tell me what you think. Go to the comment section, share it around, get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and remember, stay up and bear down.